It's review time. Mustang GT. Now, I'm not a Mustang fanboy, so yeah, I'm just going to get that out of the way right now. And if you're watching this, you probably are looking at buying a Mustang or you have bought a Mustang and you want to feel all warm and fuzzy about your purchase or you're related to me. And if that's the case, mom, I'd really appreciate if you would hit a thumbs up. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm not a Mustang fanboy. In fact, when I left the house the morning I brought this one home, uh, I left the house planning on getting a Camaro 1LE. Uh, yeah. Honestly, that's what I plan to do. I got this car instead. And this is why. Uh, being a car nut like I am, I love all cars. Uh, especially high-end exotics that I can't afford and that... Life and my job have dictated me never to have but to watch clips on YouTube on. So when I decided that it was time for me to uh, step up and shut up, shut up and step up, I guess is how it would go, and uh, start ripping laps on the racetrack like I planned forever to do, and autocrossing and doing burnouts and having a good old time in a car, it came down to deciding on what car to get. In my appropriate budget. In my appropriate budget, yes, I could get a bunch of used cars, which are pretty cool, uh, like used 911s. Not a Porsche Boxster, because I've seen so many of those blow up. It's not even funny. But like a Larissa Elise or something like that, that'd be pretty cool too. But to be honest, God, truth is, one, I don't plan just to drive around and look cool. I plan to haul ass and just do laps at the racetracks, autocross, burnouts, donuts, drifting, that kind of stuff. And any of those cars, they are really expensive to fix. I mean, I can afford the car itself, but I wouldn't be able to afford to keep it on the road. <clears throat> because uh, if you buy German, you better, you never buy German out of warranty. Start off there, unless you're a good wrench. If you're a good wrench, then hell, you know, get it. It's great. Parts are still expensive, but at least you know how to put it in. Me, I have to pay for the expensive part and pay for the expensive guy to put it in. So when I came down to making a decision, uh, I wanted cheap, reliable power. And when you want cheap, reliable power, you go American. It's the bottom line. You go Camaro, you go Challenger, you go Mustang. You know, that's just, that's the ticket. They're fast. They're fairly inexpensive comparatively to everything else and uh if something does go wrong you don't have to like auction off kid to pay to fix it that's the bottom line I and mean, they're pretty reliable and they're pretty cheap to fix so i went out looking for a camaro 1le and everyone i found was in the 40 mid 40s 46,000 47,000 depending on trim options if it's the ss1 ss2 blah 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 and i was kind of thinking about how much i am spending for this toy because i don't need it as a daily driver this would be strictly you know smiles car and then i thought well everybody knows they're doing the mid-cycle refresh on the mustang and i wonder if they're going to make a deal on the 17s and i was right they were and I was able to, they offered me the car for $29,000. And to me, that was like, shoot. I mean, we're talking nearly, almost like 20 Gs cheaper than a Camaro 1LE. And yes, a Camaro 1LE is a much better car as far as track oriented. But uh, my thing is, is I can buy this car, which is close, sort of. And I could put some things on it, make it closer, and I would have what I really, what I want. A car that's dependable, reliable, same thing, and hauls ass, and I could just take it to the track and do laps and not worry about a thing. That's what I wanted. Just make sure the thing has gas, you know? So that's how I ended up. I got the Mustang and drove it home and immediately put as many miles as I could in a couple days and I took it out to the track. Bone stock with 100 miles on it, ripping laps. And the car did great until the brakes 
gave out, which I knew was going to happen because it was all stock. And yeah, had a good old time. The car was great and brought it home and immediately got on, called the dealership and ordered track suspension, got new pads coming, we had a tower brace, all that stuff and put it on the car and immediately started tracking it again. And that's pretty much the car's story is come out of the garage, drive to the racetrack, drive it back home, back in the garage for its whole life. Uh, it probably has 3,000 street miles. It has 8,500 miles on it now. And the rest are all racetrack miles. And those street miles, for the most part, are just from driving to the track and home from the track. I mean, I have driven around here and there and done other little things. I've done autocross and that kind of stuff. And, of course, I have to commute to them. So that equals some miles. But besides that, the, the car is just balls to the wall, hauls ass all day long. And with that being said, it's never let me down. It's done exactly what I've asked it to do. And I, as I said, I don't really care for Mustangs. It just happened. The price was just perfect. Price, reliability, I was in. I mean, I, I just, it's not like I bleed Ford Blue or anything like that. I, I don't. Uh, that just a million cars. If, if the Porsche 911 Twin Turbo was the same price as this, or a Ferrari 458, or 488, or a Corvette ZR1, or a Corvette Grand, well, you get my ideas here. I'd be doing a review on one of those cars. Just so happens that this car at this time was this price, and it kind of fit my needs. The 400 and 37 something horsepower, 31, whatever it is. It was bone stock. Uh, that, yeah, it was fine for a while. And, of course, I eventually bumped it up, put the Power Stage 3 kit on it, which helped raise the uh, red line to 7,500 and a little bit more R's at the top end, a little more horsepower at the top end, which makes it ideal for track use. So if you are tracking these cars, I would go with that kit. If you're street driving, I wouldn't waste your time because it doesn't add that much power it's not like it's like night and day uh the car itself uh my buddy has a lexus rcf and they are with a five liter v8 and they are dead nuts even and that's after i did this power stage three we never raced before but they run exactly the same i mean exactly the same uh, every time we race we're tight it doesn't even move the cars are like we're parked next to each other they're, they're that close and yeah, so I wouldn't do that unless I was street driving or track driving. And yeah, I ended up putting another brake duct kit on it. I uh, put a shift kit in it and I put a weighted ball on it. I switched out the radiator to a Mishimoto three row. Um, you hear all these things about, oh, rear ends overheating, this, that, and the other. I've never had any of those problems. I've switched all the fluids out. Uh, I've done it a couple times, rear end and transmission in the 8,000 miles. Oil countless times. I don't even know how many times I've changed oil in the thing. After every, before every track weekend, I change oil. So, and I couldn't even tell you how many tracks weekends I've done. Like, it's uh, a lot. It's had a lot of oil. I'm probably going to have to buy a new oil plug here pretty soon just because the thing eventually is just going to wear out. The car so the heating wise never had a problem uh, i run full synthetic i put this what synchro mesh 2 fluid in um full synthetic and yeah never it's never gone to limp mode none of that stuff the mishimoto radiator i put in it uh just to help with water temps and it works awesome the three row radiator the temps never go up never go down doesn't matter the air temperature the water temperature that is never goes up and down the oil does get warm um i keep an eye on it for sure i when i drive the kind of track i definitely run it with the oil gauge shown so if it does get too warm uh too close to red i uh i back her down a little bit and let it cool off and, and it comes right back down but yeah a mishimoto oil cooler would probably be on my next short list for sure i'm probably gonna do it this winter i imagine maybe we'll see uh, besides that, the car has never let me down. Um, at the track, the only thing weird thing that happened is I had the electronic steering shut off on me one time. 
which was weird. It happened once, and that was it. It's never happened again. And it happened, like, probably one of the first few times I tracked it. And after that, it's never done it. Uh, replaced wheel bearings. Uh, wheel bearings have gone out. And besides that, uh, it used to eat a lot of brake pads and rotors and stuff. It used to go through those like crazy. But I pretty much found the right combo to survive, and that is just use stock rotors smooth face rotors not slotted not drilled i ran all those you just crack them if they're drilled and if they're slotted they just eat your pads to nothing so yeah and i run power stop track day pads which are cheap they're not as good as hawks i'll tell you that but they are good enough and they don't overheat and yeah they give up a little bit on bite but screw it besides that my thing is my opinion I would definitely buy this car. I've had many time, many offers to replace it uh, with different cars, even GT350s. Uh, and every time I drive the other car, because I'm getting the itch to get something different, um, it comes down to my, it's so minute differences as far as better than my car. Minute that I can't justify the price. And yeah, it's American made must, Mustang cheap reliable power that is the bottom line what this car means and stands for